while the existence of social media and messaging platforms such as Facebook, Twitter and WhatsApp have democratised information, it's hard to not acknowledge the information pollution that we've all been exposed to. There's just so much of everything everywhere, and trying to discern what's true from what's not on the internet may sometimes feel like searching for a needle in a haystack. What's even worse is that imposter accounts and fake websites now look professional, to the point where they can get more traction than the actual individuals and websites they imitate. But while we're quick to label this kind of content as fake news, it is a bit of a misnomer. Sometimes, the information isn't even fake, it's just used out of context and manipulated by others who know that a falsehood that's based in a bit of truth goes a long way. It also gets pretty tricky when these labels are weaponized by politicians who publicly disagree and seek to discredit how they are reported by media outlets. The terms disinformation, misinformation and malinformation, collectively known as information disorder, are currently being advocated by journalists worldwide in place of fake news, because this term conflates the three together. Disinformation is used to describe intentionally false information designed to cause harm. This could be towards individuals, organizations, or even countries. Crucially, those who spread disinformation know that what they're sharing is false. But when disinformation goes viral, it can very quickly turn into misinformation. Misinformation describes false information spread by someone who believes in what they're sharing and think that they're acting in good faith by helping others. Hence, the distinction between disinformation and misinformation mostly lies within intent. One is done on purpose, whereas the other is often accidental. On the other hand, Malinformation is genuine information that is used to inflict harm. An instance of malinformation is doxing, where an individual's personal details are revealed to the public with no justification. Claire Wardle of First News currently classifies seven distinct types of dis- and misinformation. Arranged on a scale from the least to most harmful, this list includes satire or parody, false connection, misleading context, false context, imposter content, manipulated content, and fabricated content. Satire or parody usually intends no harm, but may fool an undiscerning individual. The inclusion of satire in the same category as parody has certainly raised eyebrows, but this is done due to increasing use of satire to circumvent fact-checkers and to spread rumours as well as conspiracy theories. False connection occurs when the headlines, visuals or captions do not support the content presented. A prime example of this would be the use of clickbait headlines in media portals. Sometimes, editors feel the need to resort to such headlines in order to attract more clicks and higher engagement numbers just because there's so much competition for the reader's eyeballs. It also happens in social media feeds when the visuals and or captions on said feed are used to portray a particular impression which is not actually backed up by the factual content within the link itself. A content deemed as misleading is when information is used misleadingly to frame issues or individuals in a certain way by methods such as cropping photos strategically or selectively choosing quotes and statistics to present. False context is used to describe genuine content that has been reframed and recirculated with the original context taken out of it. On the other hand, imposter content is false or misleading content which makes use of well-known organizations' logos, including established news brands or established figures and journalists. Manipulated content is genuine content that is altered or manipulated and occurs often with photos and videos. Fabricated content can either be entirely in text or visual in nature and is 100% false. Hence, this causes the highest level of harm. It's not yet possible to completely stop misinformation in its tracks. However, it's always helpful to pause and consider before you share content on the internet, especially when it has the potential to stir up some pretty intense emotions or seems too good to be true. Sometimes, it's as simple as a quick Google search 
or even a reverse image search. When you do have to verify information, here are some things to pay attention to. Number one, look at the original content. Number two, look at the individual or group or organization that created or captured the content. Number three, identify the date of content creation. Number four, find out the location of the content creation. Or number five, identify the reasons behind the content's creation. It's important to note that verification isn't always foolproof and occasionally there's just too much to sift out from and you end up falling into an endless rabbit hole of sorts. So the rule of thumb is that if you are not sure, do not share.